the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As we come together on this fourth Sunday of Lent, we begin by asking God's forgiveness, for God is full of gentleness and compassion. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days, all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burnt the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land has retrieved its lost Sabbaths, during all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest while 70 years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom, both by word of mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, all the nations, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven has given to me. And he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget 
lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be May my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God, who is rich in mercy, because of the great love he had for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. Raise us up with him and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is the gift of God. It is not from works, so no one may boast. For we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works, that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you o lord jesus said to nicodemus just as moses lifted up the serpent in the desert so must the son of man be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life for god so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict. That light came into the world, but people preferred darkness to light because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come toward the light so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Listening to John's gospel, at first it seems to be about Jesus. And we're told of Jesus, son of God, son of man. We're told of the king of Israel, the Messiah, descended from David, who is the son of Joseph and his mother. Closer reading, especially this Sunday's gospel, we see ultimately that the gospel of John is a book of testimony to the love of the Father and the faithfulness of God to us, his children. Jesus has come into this world to reveal to us the loving face of God. Jesus has come to reveal to us a God of compassion, a God of forgiveness, a God of love. And Jesus invites us into an intimate relation with the creator of everything seen and unseen, that we might call him Father. The word became flesh so that we might not be afraid of God. Jesus tells us over and over again, do not be afraid. Everything that Jesus does and says is from the Father. Jesus and God the Father work continually together. Looking at the face of Jesus, we see the face of God. Jesus is totally one with the Father. And the good news is that we, you and I, are invited to share in this relationship. Jesus prays to the Father that they may be one as we are one, they in me, so that they may totally be one. Jesus comes with a vision for humanity, where we're all united together in communion, especially the weakest, the marginalized, the poor. Jesus begins his ministry unrolling the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, announcing the good news, his program of love. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. The father sends Jesus to reform humanity into a body of love with the poor as the foundation of this community. Jesus comes as a friend of the weak and the strong, the poor and the comfortable, the powerless and the powerful, the Jews and the Gentiles, so that there may be no more competition, no more rivalry, no more prejudice, no more racism, sexism, homophobia, no more rejection of the weak and the powerless, that you and I, that all of us, may be one. And Jesus shares this vision of humanity with the disciples. He invites them into communion with him and to know the love of the Father. Jesus invites these friends to live as he has lived. And he chose people from all walks of life to bring about this kingdom of love. Jesus chose Jews and Samaritans, men and women. He chose the pagan woman he healed and the servant of the Roman soldier. Jesus broke through all the boundaries of country, of culture, of race, of religion, embracing all people. And the message of Jesus is one of universal love uh, that each person is our brother, our sister, and that we are all children of God. Jesus tells us that each of us is different. Each of us has a gift, a gift for building the kingdom. St. Paul tells us that we are the body of Christ. And in the human body, there are many parts, different from one another, but one body. We build up this kingdom by trustingly placing ourselves in the loving hands of Jesus. We build up the kingdom by becoming poor, by sharing our wealth and power. 
We build up the kingdom through forgiveness and reconciliation with a deep commitment to the poor. And Jesus tells us, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, speak well of those who do evil to you, pray for those who persecute you. Jesus calls us to impossible love, to love for the sake of love. At the Last Supper, the night before he died, Jesus got up from the table. He took off his outer garments, dressed in the undergarments of a slave. Jesus, as a servant, washes the feet of the disciples. And through this gesture of love, this gesture of communion, this gesture of service, this gesture of forgiveness, Jesus shows us what it means to be a follower. We're meant to be in communion with one another, humbly serving others with humility, with forgiveness, and with love. The God that Jesus reveals to us is love, and we are one with God when we are one with love. And so we listen to these awe-inspiring words that God so loved you, that God so loves me, that he sent his son so that you and I might have eternal life. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We are children of light, and so we strive to make the needs of the world visible, and so we pray for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters for the church, that we may bring to light whatever is hidden in darkness and heal the wounds that have gone unnoticed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for the Easter sacraments, that they may walk in the light of Christ and radiate that light to others, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us, that we may resolve to look beyond appearances and attempt to see the face of Christ in all we meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who are ill, those suffering the consequences of the current pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those dear to us who have passed, especially John Zygmunt, Michelle Correa, Paul Flynn, Paula Franosi, Charles, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our 
our president, elected leaders, public servants, legislators, judges, those in the military, those in law enforcement, and members of our diplomatic corps, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Luminous God, on the first day you created light and allowed it to shine over all creation. Help us to magnify that light and share that light. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith that has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the host of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, 
all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away. 
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty, and to love you in all sincerity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In this year of St. Joseph, we close the Mass with a consecration to St. Joseph. St. Joseph, just and gentle guardian, in the company of Jesus and Mary, you walked in faith, both in the times of uncertainty and suffering and in the quiet joys of Nazareth. Guide us in the light and shadow of our lives. We entrust to you our needs and those of the whole world. Still our hearts in prayer, bringing us to the bright vision of Christ's love and peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.